Welcome back, my fun guys. I've got a question for you. What's the cutest thing about Dark Souls? That's correct. It's these little capped red feathers. Oh, can, can you not see that? Ah, one sec. There we go. Yeah, it's the little mushroom folk. So here I have a small army of one punch man okay, okay, okay. mushrooms that are all okay. gonna live happily ever after in this little bell jar that I have here. So first thing we need to do is begin by painting them up. They're quite tiny, so there's not much room for error. All we need to do is tickle their little bellies with some beige paint, but not too much, because you know what will happen. Can't forget their little butts too. And now, not sporing any details, we'll jump right into painting the caps in a nice, vibrant red. Same for the little fella as well. And there's our little duo, based like a little couple of champignons. Then a little seraphim sepia wash to give the base some contrast, just ever so slightly diluted as they're only little but strong enough to cover the bodies. Now for some shadows, we'll go back to tickling their little bellies with some darker brown shades, just hitting all the areas where shadows will be cast, mainly on the under areas of the model. And just to make those transitions a little less shiitake, I'm gonna get a 50-50 mix of the colors to blend between them. Then just tickle that tummy a little bit more with some brighter shades of white, just to get those highlights really popping and it'll start to look like a real magic mushroom. A final little center of white to give that final highlight brightness and just blend between all these tones to get one little happy cappy. Then adding different variations of red to the cap will add a bit of dynamism and interest so it's not just one flat color. No cap. Just highlight the rims and we've got a happy finished pair. Aren't they just the sweetest? Give them a little butt butt smack for good measure. And now just to make the rest of the little truffle makers. Now we can put them all to one side and get to making their happy little home. So housed all in this jar, my idea is to create a center stage tree that all the mushrooms can gather around. So with some of this floristry wire, I'm cutting it to size in order to get the right height of the tree. And with my lack of nails, just failed to pick up the last strand. Oh, oh. There we go. Now you've equipped a good enough weapon to defend yourself against any disgruntled portobellos. With your antifungal device in hand, start to give it a good twist from the bottom to form the main trunk of the tree, twisting out the bottom as well to form the roots. Then just working up through the tree and branching off as you go to form those lovely little tree arms. That is certainly a very tree looking tree. Now just give this little ent a little ent makeover, trim those long twigs and take him from a tree beard to a tree tash. I am no tree, I am an ent. And just a quick jar placement to see if it fits. Ah, it's perfect. Now to coat the tree so it's ready to paint, there's many different things that you can use like clay and hot glue, etc. But I'm gonna use this latex rubber stuff from Woodland Scenics and just coating the entire tree in this stuff, it will eventually dry, giving us a sturdy rubber tree. It can take up to three coats to get a good coverage, so it could take a little while. Now off to one side he goes to dry while we make the base for it. Back to our favorite crafting foam, I'm just cutting out little chunks to spread around and make it look like uneven ground. Normally I use PVA glue to stick everything in place, but since I had this latex stuff out, I gave it a go. And honestly, you're better off just sticking with glue. It's much easier. Lesson learned. And lessons have morals. You know, like, morals? The mushroom? Counting it. Oh! Mushroom puns might not be the best, but they'll grow on you. Now time to hot glue this tree to the ground before realizing my first mistake of using latex for the earth. It doesn't bind too well, so I decided to go over it with some polyfiller to give some structural integrity. Just a quick blast of heat from my girlfriend's hairdryer to help it dry a bit quicker. And time for my second mistake. I remembered I wanted to wrap the tree in some tiny lights, so I drilled a little hole into the base to pop the lights through, and this obviously requires the tree to be de-rooted. Nobody cares for the woods anymore. Fortunately, it hadn't molded to the base. 
Second mistake, I realized I shouldn't have drilled the hole in the center as the battery pack needs to be in the center. So a second hole is drilled over on the side. Now to mark up the battery pack size so I can cut into the wood so it can sit a little bit flusher. Now with our base carved up, it's time to pull the wiring back through and get it put in place. Or at least that would be the case until I pulled too hard and broke the wiring so it's back to square one for me and now it's time to somehow find some sets of lights that I could replace this with. Fortunately, there was some left over from Christmas, but it means that the battery pack no longer fits into my little power pack pouch on the bottom, so that's another problem for another time. But with our fancy new lights in place, I can glue the tree back and start wrapping the wiring around it, and do my best Spider-Man impression with all this stringy hot glue around. Just hooking the lights around the trunk and over some of the branches, hot gluing it in place so it keeps it nice and tight to the tree. And a quick light test. Excellent. This may look like a toadstool sample in a pot, but it's just earth texture which I'll be spreading across the floor for the mud coat. Now time to get painting it, starting off with a base of black acrylic. Then moving up to our main darker brown colour, which will be our main base colour. The black base underneath will act as a nice shadowing for any parts of the tree that I forget or that I miss, so nothing is a fungal waste. Then just dry brushing on some brighter brown tones to the top of the branches to give us that nice highlight and bring it out from the dark. Now time to venture back into the great outdoors and get this tree sprayed up with some spray adhesive, so that we can hurry back to the safe indoors where hay fever can't hurt me and start dropping some of this lovely foam shrubbery onto the branches to give us some pretty little leaves. And then just a quick little prune job and our tree is now alive. Time for the grass where the mushrooms can stalk their prey. So just basing the ground with some diluted PVA, spreading that around before adding some small flock around to beef it up a bit, before taking the static grass applicator and shake, 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 shake those lovely hay fever generators onto the turf. With the nature element complete, we can now give it a nice little tidy up and get rid of all of the excess. It's now time to place our happy little button nose critters around the tree. And there we go, there's our cute little home for our cute little fists of furies. You can appreciate them from a distance, otherwise they'll probably smack you into the next dimension. For both theirs and my safety, we'll pop the dome on top. And there we go, we've made a lovely little mushroom jar. Now I've completely run out of mushroom puns and I was really kind of reaching at the end, but hey. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please be sure to drop this video a like, leave a comment if you have any better mushroom jokes than I do. And uh, yeah, hit subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you all next week.